Yeah, this tour really was unprecedented. It hasn't been done in uh, many years. You know, there are only adults at this facility, mostly men, and it was an attempt for this agency to bring transparency after years of criticism. Past the gate and barbed wire, this detention center runs much like any prison or jail in the U.S. But inside, the director of the Seattle Field Office of Immigration and Customs Enforcement describes a sad state of affairs. All of the unfair um, attacks on my officers, uh, even physical assaults, frankly, it's offensive. They're doing their jobs out there. And there's this, this current climate to encourage um, taking on and challenging officers and you know thwarting an arrest it's just it's it's I've, I've never seen that that's what is disheartening to me tension came to a head two months ago when a man armed with incendiary devices was shot and killed outside this very detention center in Tacoma she I feels that attack was aimed at her right officers now, I got to tell you officer officer we'd all just like to do our jobs and go home to our families but politics to get in the way and so then it creates some of that friction, and, and that's what's unfortunate too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tuesday, we were invited inside by Immigrations and Customs Enforcement for a look at how this center operates. On any given day, 1,500 migrants are housed here. A look behind the curtain for an agency that's been heavily criticized for his treatment of migrants on our southern border. Here in Tacoma, 65 nationalities are represented in this detention center. 31% are from Mexico, 11% are from India. Over the hour tour, we're shown holding cells, a medical facility, and commercial kitchen. The average stay is 70 days. Men and women who face the very real possibility of deportation. I know what we are doing are the laws, and frankly, as we have said over and over and over again, I don't make the laws. That's at Congress. If they don't like what we're doing, then change the laws. Laws these men and women will continue to enforce. And just because a detainee is at this facility in Tacoma, it doesn't mean that he or she was even arrested in the Northwest. Detainees can be transferred to avoid facilities in other parts of the country. Back to you. So I know a lot of people, Sebastian, wonder if they have as many as 1,500 people a day. What about the children? What happens to the children of those people? And, and did you see any kids? No kids are housed at this facility. We're told that it's only adults. They've actually never housed kids. The average stay is about uh, 71 days. They have a, a court and several judges uh, that report directly to facility so that they can try to process these cases as quickly as possible. Back to you. Sebastian, uh, before you go, it why did ICE decide to open up the facility to our cameras? It's a pretty unusual move, isn't it? It is unusual. It really comes kind of from the top down. The director of the field office here in Seattle was newly appointed, transferred from D.C., and she says she has nothing to hide. It's their attempt at transparency, and she really wanted to kind of shoot down uh, some of the, the more you know nasty accusations that have been leveled at ICE. She says that uh, they're simply trying to do their job and operate uh, under the Constitution and the laws.